Good evening, Gavin. Good evening, TC, and welcome all to our weekly podcast, Terry Curran, for Curran View, the Order Bills brother. You, Mr. Terry Curran, how are you? Steady away? Yep. Steady away, buddy. Steady away. Have you had a decent week, T? Yeah, it's, it's been a... It's, well, I'm saying it's been a decent week. Jock changed his club, got a good result last night, went to watch him. So, in that on that front, yes, but... Um, do we get back to normal and get with the the uh, new new what the, all, with all the lives have been given us? I think we all are in a uh, quandary with the all with all the bad news what's happening in the world. Absolutely, we have no idea what's going on. We do know that India have landed a rocket on the dark side of the moon. A decent album by Pink Floyd, by the way. Um, what what clubs Jock gone to play for now this season? Barton. He's having more clubs than what I've had, Gabby. <laughs> He's got through a few, any he, <laughs> Oh, well, so, as long as he gets his starting shirt, I always say that, give your best, give 100% and uh, progress, because I know that um, you've always said that when Jock starts to fill out, he'll be some player, and that let's hope that he does. Uh, Magic Moments, T, what have you sourced for us this week? Mitoma's goal for Brighton against Newcastle, but I say it every week. Yeah. I pick one out and there's... There's that many goals. It's been it's been unreal, hasn't it? The Forest one, the um, no, wait, what's the North Shields one? What you put on? You oh, put about five South this Shields, week, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, uh, Gabby, it is. We we are going to be talking about them shortly. But um, Mitoma's goal for Brighton. It's against Wolves, wasn't it? They won four one away yeah. at the Molyneux. I love to see people. I mean, people will turn around and say, "Well, why didn't he get stopped?" It's it's very difficult to stop players in full flight. Yeah, uh, running at pace unless mm. you bring them down, and if if you start to do that, you're going back to the old type type of football, and you're going to get booked or sent off. So you're going to be in a shoot with less players on the field. But um, great skill, absolutely great skill. I think he's a little Japanese guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's uh, he. He come, didn't he come the beginning of last season? I've seen bits and pieces of him. And I think he's a, a tremendous player. We did speak the other day. At that time, I didn't see the goal. I have seen it since. I mean, he took it deep and he just run. It was oh. almost like Maradona-esque, wasn't it, in 86? Yeah. It's very difficult because what people say, yeah. Yeah, you know, once you're going at full pelt... Um, and you just just a slight little drop of, uh, of the shoulder, shimmy, what they used to say in my day, uh, when you shimmy somebody and just drop that shoulder. It, it's very off-putting. It's very difficult to stop, unless you can bring him down. And, that, and all, that, all, all that's gone out of the game now. Absolutely. But I, I do think Brighton have started off again superb. They had a great season, best ever last season. And look as though they're going to uh, carry on this season. They've got some fine players, great win at Wolves. And uh, they've got some... Tr- I don't know where they get them from because when Brighton buy a player, and, and Brentford as well, we've never heard of them. And we think, blimey, where's this kid come from? And how can they do it? And other clubs can't do it. It just beggars belief. We've always asked for input on the Magic Moments for uh, members of the group to look at their magic moments and post it up and link up with us. And uh, Tarina Savage has done exactly that too. And uh, she said her magic moment was Gus Armour's goal for uh, Sheffield United against uh, Nottingham Forest, which was li- it wasn't was live on the TV. There was a game of cricket that was played at Trent Bridge and that was the reason that the game was brought forward it was never going to be a live TV game, and that's why it wasn't on the telly. But what a great goal that was by Harmer. Absolutely fabulous goal. Uh, you know, again, an unstoppable, unstoppable yeah. shot. And it was, as you always say, pace and place. And he, he didn't panic. He composed himself and he just placed it in the top corner. I've watched this kid for a few years now because he used to play at Coventry. Yeah. Uh, t- to be honest, I mean, Eki's doing really well there. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult for him, you know, with the with the only selling players. Uh, he's not really being back, but a good manager will get the best out of what he's got. Yeah, right, and that's what 
Brentford's done, and that's what Brighton's done, and then now they've had equality because they've, they've built the foundation, uh, which is when they want to find these type of players now, they've got the money to go and spend on them, and then double and treble the uh, uh, the value of it of the player. Absolutely, and it does look as though he's going to buy, or he has bought, a young Cameron Archer from Aston Villa. On a permanent sign, I do believe Villa have got something in the contract that they uh, have got a buyback clause. But he looks a fine player. Had a great season on loan at Middlesbrough last season. I don't like these loans. If it was up to me, I'd stop all the loans. And I certainly wouldn't be letting teams loan out a player to the league below. It would have to be two leagues below. And they'd have to be under the age of 20. If they can't loan them out, sell them. And if you can't, tough, don't buy me in the first place. I'm sick of the big clubs buying all these players, sending all these players out on loan, and maybe then they've got enough players. I know. It, the game, they have ruined the game, haven't they? And it's Absolutely. Not, you yeah. know, it's the people what's coming to the game. What's, I saw all this happening 50 years ago, yeah. mate. Yeah. I did, I saw it happen 50 years ago. Absolutely, it's quite incredible. Uh, I'm going to go through a few, I also... Uh... Well, just by the way, your team, uh, your team, you're a Birmingham fan, but you're, <laughs> you, you, Villa's won again tonight, 5-0. Yeah, completely. Co- I mean, take that Rangers and Celtic out of that league and it, it is a poor league. Absolutely, I mean, you did say um, your team. There's lots of Birmingham City fans that do believe that Aston Villa is my team. My team is Birmingham City. It's your, it's your lad, it was a Villa fan. Uh, yeah, my stepson, yeah. Um, so I do go down Villa with with Tom and Kieran, my uh, me son-in-law as well. So uh, lots of me grandkids. I mean, we've got quite a few of them, a, a Villa supporter. So I look at them now as a granddad. I hope that they'll both do well, Birmingham and Villa. And a great 5-0 away win just shows you the, the difference in abilities to between that Scottish Premier League and the English Premier League. I mean, Villa now in the return league probably could play their under-12s and, uh, and and get a result. You see, I mean, what disappoints me in all that is you look at something like Steven Gerrard, yep. who I really wanted to do well. Yeah. You know, because I want English coaches to mm. really do well. Yeah. You know, uh, Emirates come in there and they look a completely different team. Yep. With, with a different style. Yep. It's you know it's not unbelievable because I always believe if if you can coach what you've got and add start uh, adding better quality to it, then you'll make yourself an elite manager. And by the way, Villa look really good. I know um, Newcastle beat them, but there was a couple of mistakes in that game. Yeah, there was. Yeah, Villa Villa really were in that game for yes. for, a, for a long time, and that Villa had put their chances away and not committed so many ridiculous mistakes at the back. But you always said to you, football is a game of mistakes. You know, it could have gone other, uh, another way. A little bit flatting yeah. for Newcastle. But Newcastle are a great side. And while we're talking about Newcastle, yeah, it was South Shields. I mean, what a goal. He's took it from his own half. And then he's just like, he's just <laughs> left, didn't he? It's like, it's, it's, like, it's like a rocket. It's like a firework. <laughs> A rocket firework, and you let it off, and it just. And once he once he teed it up, you but you could see look, you could see he got his head up. Yeah. He saw the keeper, and mm-hmm. he let it. What well, remember the Dutch guy, 1978, the defender. He used to score some great goals for that Dutch. What's he? We had um, Harry Hahn, who was Arn, a midfield Arn. player. Yeah, midfield. Then he and he was a defender. They they put him back. I think he was a defender in the seventy four. And then I think they played in midfield uh, in seventy eight. But uh, Harry Hahn. But the Dutch masters used to smash him in from uh, all around the pitch, didn't they? Yeah, strike. I mean, he was an unbelievable strike. Absolutely. And I'm glad you put it up because again, that's the one good thing about what you do, Gab. You know, it's not all about Premier League. It's about all football, and yeah. you, you, you you put some great posts up, or videos up, or goals from all over the world, and uh, and even down in non-league football, when 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 you do see them, you will put them on. Absolutely, and I put little um, talking points onto the current view as well for uh, for our group members to chew the fat over. Uh, the the ones that's got more traction or most traction this week 
are the female uh, England ladies, lionesses posts. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the podcast. But I thought Spurs' performance was magical, as well as Harry Kane's uh, first goal, uh, league goal in the Bundesliga. And Lionel Messi, I've just looked at the uh, uh, the TV there on Sky Sports News. Uh, minus 14, I think they were, either minus 14, minus 15, rooted to the bottom of the league into Miami, into Lionel Messi. They've won the first League's Cup and uh, they're playing out of the skin. He, he strolls around the game, around the pitch, don't touch the ball many times. As soon as he gets in a position, he comes to life, bang, 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 it's in the back of the net. He's just different driver, you know. You can't stop him. Well, he... His, his touch is that good, yeah. it's unreal. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what gives him the time and the space. You know, add on top of, uh, to add on top of that is people do fear him, players do fear him. Oh, yeah. And they do back off. Absolutely. You know, if they go to him, I mean, the reason reason why they don't go to him is because they've petrified him in doing him. Um, but, like I say, his touch is that good. Mm-hmm. If you close him down, He's capable, or he's got that ability, just to just walk past you. Not even run past you, just walk past you. Yeah. It's it's an incredible ability the, the man's got. Uh, he's just, I guess in modern times, and, and, and only, you know, he, of, of this generation, the most natural footballer that, that I've seen in this generation I'm not going back in time because uh, that's for another debate. But I'm thinking in the recent times, Lionel Messi, you he, just look at what he does. He's just mesmeric, isn't he? The, yeah, um, listen, 100%. Mm. I think we would all agree with that. Yeah. But it, uh, the game has helped him. The, 100%. The 100%. You know, if he'd have had to take the titles with Maradona and best, even yeah. myself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, you know, if, if it'd be um, it absolutely. That's why I was glad. Not many people are, but I was glad that they take that out, that brutality out of the game, mm-hmm. because it really shows Messi and that type of player. You know, it's very difficult. To, it is very difficult to mark players with that ability, yeah. right? And, and, and so, in, like in our day, George Best, Maradona. They, um, Cruyff, they got that much stick. Mm. Pele's, the Vivalinos, you know, what would they have been like playing on pitches today and not mm. getting brutally kicked? They would just be unbelievable as they were in their because days. Pele scored, uh, scored over a thousand goals, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I know it was only in his league, but that's irrelevant. It's still a thousand goals. Yeah. I mean, Pushkas was another one. The, the yeah. game is, is littered with fantastic players of yesteryear. But as you say, the, the, the player of today, when Messi gets the ball, they think, do I, go, do I get tight? If I get too tight, he'll turn me. Do I back off? And if I give him half the yard, he'll they drop his shoulder petrified. and go back. They Absolutely. are tight, uh, 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 getting tight. Absolutely. Petrified. I mean, in your day, it was like one, one train of thought Smash him. No, I don't. Anywhere above the ankle was just fair game. And yeah. in many occasions, there's that picture of you uh, with Kenny Clement that that's yeah. wrestling you with his with his arm. It's more like a, a wrestling move than a, than than a footballing challenge. I watched I watched the Maradona one when he was at Barcelona. That oh, was incredible. When, when all when all 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 hell broke loose. Yeah. And they were finish up punching, kicking, mm. because it, it was brutal what they did to him. Absolutely. You know, uh, I mean, you go on about people working hard. Mm. You never see Messi chasing back. I've never seen it. Because no. what anybody tells me. No, I haven't. What I see with Messi is he goes deep. Yeah. To pull people out. Yeah. And uh, they always used to say when I was playing. Uh, when we were playing against the opposition, if the managers were a bit weary, frightened of a player, if he goes deep, leave him. Yeah. You know, leave him. You know, you can do make a difference wherever he goes. Uh, nobody's going to stop him. The only way to stop him is through the brutal side of football back in yesteryear. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the only way. 
And people said, well, they would, of course they would, because they used to jump in into people, didn't they? Oh, no, They didn't take the yeah. ball, they took the man. No, they were just, a, they were a bunch of assassins back in them days. And we had Leeds United that were a team of assassins. Book Corner, in association with myfootballbooks.com, we've recorded part 13 of our football book podcast with Andy from myfootballbooks.com, which will be out probably tomorrow or the day after. Um... Love doing that with, with Andy. He's got probably the biggest collection of books that he promotes anywhere online in the world and is an absolute font of knowledge. Always gives us a recommendation. <clears throat> and it was Glory, Glory Gone by uh, Samuel Rook about Tottenham Hotspur. And on this day, 23rd of August, but back in 1978, Ozzy and Ricky made their home league debut at White Hart Lane. That was against the Villa and they got absolutely smashed. And Dennis Mortimer said to me, probably the best atmosphere that he ever, ever played in. Unbelievable signings, weren't they, for, for Tottenham? Oh, phenomenal, quite phenomenal. And, and on the back of that 78 World Cup finals, I mean, it was the ticker tape World Cup. Them scenes in Buenos Aires when they're oh. just chucking the paper down. It was and quite think- phenomenal. And to think that Sheffield United yeah. could have had Maradona, it's its just unthinkable, isn't it? Imagine that. You could have gone past Maradona when you Instead scored. Instead of Alex Sabella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't look even better on your CV, TC. By, by the way, he was a great player, him. Yeah, he was. Alex I mean, But again, there were so many great players, South American players, Argentina, Brazil. You, you, in particular, we've seen that many over the years. It's oh, Peru with Kubilas and the South American, they had that Latin flair. And uh, when they come to England and played for Tottenham Hotspur, they certainly kicked it on a level. And that Tottenham team that went on in '81 and won the FA Cup when Ricky scored that fantastic goal, beating Manchester City in the replay, were a joy to watch. And one of the great. One of the great watches in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, another book, Liam Brady, born to be a footballer. His autobiography with Nick Callow looks to be, promises to be, a fantastic read, uh, Liam Brady. We have Liam in the Legends Lounge a little bit later too, but your memories of uh, Liam Brady, did you ever play against oh, Liam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. P- few times, few yeah. times. Uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant player. Again, I mean, at Arsenal, when Arsenal uh, were like more of a boring team to to to, to play against, mm. but if he'd have been in a Manchester City team or a uh, or an Arsenal when Arsenal were under Wenger, would have been. I mean, he was a genius, but he would yeah. have been a, an unbelievable player. It was sad, really, that when and that... again. And the tattles he took is that's another thing. The tattles he had to take. Uh, I mean, Brady, Brady was just a, a great player, and and that left foot. I mean, there was him, him and Francis absolutely burst on the scene together. Didn't they? Can you remember? Who was that? Trevor Francis and Liam Brady. Yeah, they were around about the same they time. Were the they were two who burst onto the scene. Yeah, uh, I mean, Trevor's. I mean, I didn't come into football until I was 18, which were Doncaster. Mm-hmm. Trevor scored four goals on his debut, didn't he? Uh, he, he? He certainly scored four goals when he was 16. It wasn't his debut. 16. But it was the February of that season. He scored a goal on his home. His debut of Birmingham, I believe, was uh, a game against Cardiff at Ninian Park. And then his home debut, 100%, was against Oxford United. We drew 1-1. Because I, I can remember... <laughs> Well, it, the headline was 16 year Francis, 16 yeah. year old superstar, uh, scores four, yeah, four so, goals. So, I thought it was his so debut, but I'm going back a few years. But even Brady broke onto the scene uh, before I really got into football. Yeah, Liam was, was a tremendous player. In fact, when Alan joined Arsenal, he joined to play with Liam Brady and Alan Ball. Sadly and unbelievably, Terry got, Neal rid of him. got rid of Alan Ball. No, Brady was still there. Brady was still there with Al. And when then... did he go to? When did he go to Juventus? 
He went to Juventus. We're going to be talking about that shortly. 1980. So it was after the uh, 79 FA Cup final that, yeah. uh, that Arsenal won against Manchester United. But And finally, give it to Moore and he will score by Stuart Humphreys and Richard Harrison. The biography, biography about the great Ian Storymore. And we have done a podcast with Storymore and I'm going to do a little... Uh, another podcast gentleman and all uh, he's a lovely bloke I phoned him up today we had a chat because I said look you know any help that you need promoting your book Ian we're, uh, we're there for you and, and I says let's do a little podcast about that iconic FA Cup game quarter final of the FA Cup when you beat Everton at the city ground and he scored a hat trick so we're going to be rolling back the years and looking at 1967 and that game and we're going to be putting a few little bits out with the book and the links to buy the book for the great Ian Storymore. Storymore, my lord, Storymore. Brilliant. And, and such a humble bloke as well, isn't he? Too? Yeah, like, be, like yourself. So I mean, down to earth. Yeah. You know, Udi's Udi's the same. You yeah. know, you, you, you talk to these guys, they're absolute geniuses. And you think, you know, it's like they're so down to earth. But uh, wonderful book there. Give it to more. He will score. Uh, by Stuart Humphreys and Richard Harrison, the SRB Media. So that was the uh, the book about Ian Story Moore. Uh, T, strange but true, first club in London to turn professional was, have a guess. It was, uh, what were Arsenal's? The good, some of, what the car? Was it Arsenal? That, they, were, they were Woolwich Arsenal, they were South Woolwich London. Woolwich Arsenal? Club. No, it was Fulham. In Fulham? eight, yeah, Fulham in 1898. Most goals scored in the English top flight football season is 128 by Aston Villa in 1930 31. I love all these, these are brilliant, these absolutely brilliant. All, all these by Le, uh, Les Scott's great book, Denied Promotion by a Tree. And Chesterfield were the last league club to have floodlights erected at the old Saltergate ground in 1963-64 so, season. What Fulham? Uh, 1898, did you say? 1898. They were the first brilliant. club in London I like to keep, I like to keep the Riviera because if they ever come up in quizzes... It's great, isn't it? Great knowledge. You know, it's brilliant. Absolutely. And while we're talking about Chesterfield, uh, Limbs... An Oldham fan broke an elbow celebrating a last-minute equaliser against Chesterfield. Uh, quite incredible. I mean, fans get absolutely elated. Players do when they score goals, but the fans go absolutely crackers. What's the maddest scenes that you've ever seen to celebrating a goal? It's a bit different to nowadays. I mean, today, it, 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 it's obviously it's a bit more stranger today. Yeah. They've got some great celebrations. Mm-hmm. In our day, you put your hand up, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were nobody yeah. taking the shirts off and things mm. like that. It just started towards the end of it. So I, I never saw any strange one. Well, uh, I didn't see strange celebrations. I saw little things like Tony Curry and, and uh, the Leicester player coming, kissing each other. Yes. Ball yeah. sitting on the fall in his arms, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I never saw strange uh, or weird celebrations. In fact, they tried to stop us celebrating. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to do that now. Do you remember any goal that you scored for, or, or any of the teams that you played for that scored a goal where the fans went absolutely bonkers? Have you got a most memorable moment? I mean, that's going to be a memorable moment that that well, kid will yeah. never forget. He's broken his elbow, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, don't forget, in our days, there weren't, there weren't the TVs around. The, no. I mean, the fans used to s- celebrate uh, yeah. like mad. I mean, that was got to be the the weirdest one, like like me jumping onto a fence. Yes, yeah. You know, because I can't remember anybody else jumping onto a fence before me. I could be wrong. I'm not saying I was the first one, but I cannot remember, you know. There's an iconic picture of Howard Gale jumping onto a fence as well. Yeah, when, but he's when, after me. Yeah, absolutely. So he probably watched you. Was it Blackburn that you scored that goal against? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you something else and all. They all went on about canting out. Yeah. Playing with his collar up. Yep. I played with my collar up for Sheffield Wednesday. Did I get a bollocking off of Jack Chow? <laughs> and his photographs of me with my collar up. I think it was at Wimbledon, the ball places. In the white kit. 
No, it was uh, that was in the white kit, but we did play there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did play with the white kit. It was in the blue and white stripes. Right. And uh, I'll send you the photo either tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, because, I mean, Jack gave you a bollocking basically about everything, uh, didn't he? Yeah. He <laughs> said, I got a bollocking from Jack by when I, by fetching newspapers in. <laughs> I didn't take Daily Mirror in. He could buy me. <laughs> uh, Louise Cobbold, um, an artist, she's drawn pictures of so many football players and sports people as well. But the most recent one that she's drawn is one of Diego Maradona. I have put it on the group and I've put it in a few groups uh, that we have and a few other groups that I'm, uh, I post in. And she had, I've got to say, a tremendous response. I mean, there has been one or two that, you know, if it, it had cheat written on it, she might sell a, a few more. But again, Udi always says this about with Maradona. If that would have been Gary Lineker that would have done that, the fans would be all over it because it was against us that the fans still uh, call him a cheat. But Paul Scholes done something very similar against Zenit St. Petersburg in the Champions I'm reading League. I'm against what the court. You've got absolutely. A bit of it. Yeah, absolutely. But what they do with Maradona because he scored that goal. Yeah. It, I mean, Peter Shilton and all them, I think to myself, grow up a little bit. And absolutely. That, you know, great, man, great bloke is Shilts. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, he's only done what Schultz would have done. He's only done what, like you said, Gary Lineker would have done. Yeah. He's only done what Alan Ball would have done. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Greaves would have done. Or Jack Child would have done. They're not going to turn around and say, sorry, referee, uh, I am ball that. You know, it's, Maradona is one of the greatest players of all time. 100%. And, and for, for, for the English to keep going on about, you know, the hand of God, do me a favour. It's boring, we isn't lost. it? We yeah. lost. Every day we lost. Yeah, we lost to the better team. They were by far the best team on the day and that ran out winners of the World Cup in 1986. But that's a picture of Diego. Uh, I think it was about 1980 when he first came to Wembley. Looks about somewhere between 80 and 82. So it's a, a very young Diego Maradona by Louise Cobbold. Louise Cobbold Art on Facebook, guys. So if you want to follow her work and buy her work, uh, check That's her a out. beautiful photograph. You know, oh, fantastic. I mean, she she done the uh, front cover of the FA Cup semi-finals as well um, at Wembley. There was the, the Bright Lad Matoma. There was uh, Rashford and uh, one or two others that, that were on the front cover. But you look at them and you just think, it's a photo, in it? It's like she's, she's done that as a camera. It's a photo. No, yeah, it's, it's a drawing. It's incredible everything about it, isn't it? Yeah, un- unbelievable. I saw it and I thought, I thought, wow, I think I put on it. Yeah, you it did too. Yeah, you did. Absolutely unbelievable. Also, what's unbelievable, football match cancelled because of goose. I'm guessing Canadian goose poo. Tower Hamlets versus Ulston Town. Um, cry, absolute crazy. Listen, there's no surprise you today, can we <laughs> no, say? No, but I mean, I've heard it with dog shit and stuff like that, but because I, you know, that that can be dangerous, can't it? If you get it in your eye and stuff, so I kind of get that, but I mean, Canadian goose, Gabby, like, on a Saturday, I didn't on think a that Saturday, was dangerous. Sunday, when I was a kid, yeah. we all had to go on pitch and yeah. clean the dog for up, yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, we've done it. We've done it as as managers. I would imagine you still do it now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the pitches that the kids have to play on leaves a lot to be desired. But I couldn't believe it. Tower Hamlets. The game was called off because of. I'm guessing it was Canadian goose. I mean, they they can crap for England and Canada. But um, but my, I'll tell you what. A little story as well. My little staff, because where we used to live in Kingshurst, by the lake, there was loads of them. And my little staffer used to go go down there and she'd eat it by the guy by the well bucket load to be quite truthful. It must be very very tasty to Staffordshire Bull Terriers, but uh, yeah, game called off. Absolute madness. <laughs> Hollywood football at uh, Wrexham to another ridiculous result. Is it scripted or is it just coincidence? Listen. I'll put it more down as scripted. Listen, mm, yeah, I do. Things yeah. what's happening nowadays. Mm. I, I mean, there were, there, it was 
was it? Five three. Yeah. And then the equal, uh, they got many five four in ninety fifth minute. Yeah. And five five in ninety eighth minute. Mm. When I saw it, because uh, I was sat in bar and I'm looking, mm. and all of a sudden it come up five five. I said, because they come up, they were five three down. Yeah, they were in the ninety fifth minute. <laughs> yeah, it, it was incredible. I know it's good. It is. It's it's incredible. But this isn't the first time on the podcast that we've been talking about. An incredible result at Wrexham. And to listen to the rest of this podcast, head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. Thank you.